And the truth is, from God's perspective, no person can earn their way into a state. They can't earn their way into a state. They have to actually desire and, and be humble enough to experience the state before they will be in the state. And, and I feel for many of them, they need to let go of their strong desire to f- feel that they have been in control of their life and, and understand that actually God's got far bigger plans for them than they themselves at this point can even imagine and therefore, and if they submit to God's plans for them in the sense, if they submit to the way God has designed for them to grow, then they will actually go from this state of resistance to another state where they'll be humble and they'll grow quite rapidly if they allow that state to continue. And they'll actually then begin to experience what at one moment with God is and then experience what at one moment with their soulmate is and then, it, and then actually meet the people from these other dimensional existences, these other parallel existences, if you like, and know that it's true only at that point. Yeah. At the moment, they are just theorising and theorising, coming up with new theories. Uh, in, and, and in a way, they are almost like philosophers who have become addicted to hearing their own words. Um, yeah. And that's a very dangerous place in the end if you want to progress because because uh, if you just become like a philosopher listening to his own words, you become like a person who, who can't hear anything else or who then postulates that their understanding of it is what the person who's telling you is actually understanding it as. So every every celestial spirit goes to one of these six fear spirits and says, look, it's not how you're saying you think it is. And they're going, yeah, no, it is, it is. <laughs> It is, you know, the six fear spirits going, yeah, it is, you know, what you're saying to me, I've heard before, you know. No, and the other fellows go, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You've never heard this before because if you'd heard this before, you would already be in the state I'm in. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he's going, well, no, no, that's not true. Like, I know I've heard this before, you know. And, and, and because the, the celestial spirit has to darken himself to get to the six fear in the first place, the six fear spirit can't tell much difference between himself and that person, aside from the fact that he looks much happier. He can't really tell much, aside from the emotional condition of the, of the, of the celestial spirit. And so what he does is he judges the emotional condition of the, six, of the celestial spirit, who's come to him to tell him that his understanding of the celestial spheres is not what the celestial spheres are like, but because he's now judging the celestial spirit themselves and judging the celestial spirit's condition as being unworthy of his attention, he's now set up a state of arrogance that means that he can't listen to the truth. Now, for many of these spirits who are here tonight, for 2,000 years they've had the opportunity to hear this truth, and yet they have rejected it because of the exact mechanism that I've just described. So how can they now be angry with God or angry with the messenger? The only person really... That they can really be angry with them themselves, but even that's not too helpful. It would be far better for them just to allow themselves to grieve the fact that they have rejected the truth for 2,000 years and then accept the truth and see where it takes them. It's bizarre because it's, no one's really talking. It's, yeah, yeah. it's almost like I'm getting information from my guides. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're actually talking to a massive auditorium of millions. Mm. They're also grieved by the fact that a lot of a lot of um, okay, a lot of spirits in the fifth sphere aren't choosing to stay in the sixth sphere very long. They just return back to the sixth. Return back to the fifth. They return back to the fifth yeah. to develop and not stay. Well, because unfortunately, the sixth sphere has become such an intellectually dominant sphere and dimension that any person who's on the divine love path in the spirit world feels the difference between this open emotional state that they have in the fifth sphere and then when they enter the sixth sphere, the general aura or, or, or general, you could say, pervading atmosphere of the sixth dimension is a, is, a, is, a, is a pervading atmosphere of intellectual dominance. Now, any person who's focused on working their way through their emotions is, is going to be repelled by such an atmosphere. They'll go back to the atmosphere that that is actually more acceptable to them and that allows their emotions to flow more freely and once they've dealt with as much emotion as they can that they can skip the sixth sphere they can go to the seventh dimension seventh sphere and be in another emotional state 
and they don't have to very long stay in this sixth dimensional existence where there's heavy intellect. What's been occurring for them is they're starting to feel a lot of feelings of being of rejection. But they heard the talk yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> And they realise that that's not actually progressing or doing anything for them, but they're just feeling quite yeah. they're angry and they're feeling rejected. Well, many of them, unfortunately, are for many centuries in most cases, have set themselves up as the, as the deliverers of truth, both to the lower dimensions but also to the earth. And the problem with, with that is that they have not been delivering the actual truth. They've been delivering what their version of the truth is to the earth and to the lower dimensions. Now, what's happening in the lower dimensions, due to uh, and myself and Mary and, and others of coming to the earth, is that, is that the lower dimensions are starting to listen more to the divine love path than they were listening to the, 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 the spirits in the sixth dimension. Mm. What that does is it creates a feeling in the spirits in the sixth sphere that they're no longer important. But, but actually, it's their own self-importance that has kept them in the sixth dimension all this time. It's their own feelings of self-importance and self-arrogance and, and self that has kept them there. So, so they do need to go through the emotion of, yes, you're not that important, as am I, not that important. And you need to go through that emotion, understanding that God's got a far bigger plan than your, than your minute intellect can actually conceive of at this, at this point. Even though you think your intellect is large and it has a far better understanding of many things that people on the earth can understand, the truth is that your minute intellect has not been supercharged, if you like, by God. So at the end of the day, it, it, it is incapable of understanding all of God's plans. And as a result of that, it's kept you in this arrogant state where you then believe that you are the purveyor, you know, you're the source of all truth. You're not the source of all truth. God is the source of all truth. And at some point, we need to let go of that belief that we're the source of all truth, accept that God's the source of all truth. And when we do that, which is what many of the lower dimensional spirits are doing now, they're, they're forgetting that uh, mankind or people in the spirit world are the source of all truth, and they're now focusing on the fact that God's the source of all truth. And if I connect to God, I will connect to all truth. And as a result of that the importance or the self-importance of the, of the people in the sixth dimension who have set themselves up as teachers have, is now being challenged. Mm -hmm. And that is a good thing, actually. Yeah. 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 It's <coughs> a different type of communication. It's bizarre. That's all right. Just keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, was, I, just, I was asking my guides, because... It's still based on my arrogance as well. How I'm connecting to emotions. But yeah. Well, that's all right. What you're trying to do, though, at the moment is you're trying to uh, explain to me what's going on, whereas all I'm trying to do is connect to the six fear yeah, spirits okay, yeah. who, whom I can help at this moment in time. And if you can be humble to that experience, you'll be able to be a part of helping these six fear spirits to answer a lot of the questions that they've been asking for such a long time. Um, but have never, you know, even though they've been told the answers, they have not been humble enough uh, to actually accept the answers, really. Yeah, because there's sense? been a great number of people, actually, since you guys have been on Earth, and the teachings, there's just a lot more spirits progressing Yeah, um, from the lower dimensions. And, and but many of them are bypassing the sixth dimension. And they bypass the sixth dimension instantaneously. And then they go into the seventh dimension, which automatically makes them even brighter and more powerful than a six-fear spirit, which then makes the six-fear spirit feel what... You know, the biggest the impact and their grievance release, it's mainly the religious type of movements. The, the spirits who, who are following certain religions yep. um, are bypassing the leaders. So of those religions. Of those religions. Yeah. 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 And like Buddha's getting quite angry himself. As one example, yeah, um, because many of his followers are no longer transmitting lovely feelings to him, mm. that the feelings that God deserves in the first place, and secondly, um, because he's not receiving those feelings, also many of those spirits are now progressing beyond his own development. So Buddha is sitting there in the sixth dimension, in his own feelings of arrogance that I should be receiving all this adulation and and and, and all this uh, worship. 
and in reality, God should be receiving it, and he's believed he's God, so you know, so he feels like he's been justified in accepting all of this. But but now many of these spirits are now the spirits that he himself guided in the past now have leapt frog over him and are now in the seventh dimension or higher and in a far better condition than he personally is. And uh, as a result of that, he, he becomes challenged by, by the experience. Yeah. And pretty much all the leaders of the religious movements that have ever been, who have not uh, embraced the divine, you know, God's way, the divine way, and they are all being challenged by this process. Yeah. 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 And again, it's a matter of them, you know, and the trouble is, is as they exercise their anger, if they continue to exercise their anger and rage, they will, they will degrade in their condition. <laughs> So what, what will happen is that they will go from the fifth, the sixth dimension down to the fifth dimension and then from the fifth dimension down to the fourth dimension until such a point in time as they realise that actually, wow, this, this anger or rage that I'm experiencing is an emotion I do need to feel and they'll start connecting with the path that God created, the way that God created for them to move through the dimensional spaces. It's quite a beautiful watch. Yeah. A lot of them are connecting. Yeah. Like I'm changing the way I'm channeling too. The way the way in which um, a lot of this will happen, the the uh, shifts that will happen in the spirit world, if the if the spirits in the sixth dimension can understand that many of them have spent much of their life setting themselves up as the as the source of all truth, when in reality God is the source of all truth. <laughs> And, and as a result of that, they have, uh, they have limited their own, their own uh, condition so much. And in fact, they've committed what I feel to be the most severe of all sins. Mm. And the most severe of all sins is, is the sin against the Holy Spirit, the, the rejection of God's way of progression. It has an immediate penalty in that you will never progress into the seventh dimension or, or beyond that into it one minute with God or into a soul union state so so there's no punishment for it except for its own uh, its own the sin creates its own uh, error in the sense that in the sense that if I if I sin against the Holy Spirit I sin against the reception of God's love I'm actually rejecting God's love entering my soul and in the process of rejecting God's love entering my soul What's happening is I am in that moment actually rejecting the only way that I can progress beyond the sixth dimension. So, so the penalty is I am stuck in the sixth dimension, and I cannot progress beyond it. And uh, and there are many leaders of many spiritual movements on the planet on the, uh, who have now passed in the spirit world, and um, and and many of them have gone into the state of thinking that their religious movement is the truth rather than accepting that actually no, what we need to do is discover God's truth not what we believe to be true but we need to discover God's truth when we discover God's truth then we will give up our own form of truth our own versions of truth and we'll understand that God has created a way for us to connect to God but also for us to continue our everlasting growth and and while I reject the Holy Spirit, while I sin against God's love entering me, while I'm preventing God's love from entering me through my own arrogance, what I'm doing is I'm rejecting the only way in which I can progress beyond the sixth dimension. And, and that's the penalty. The penalty is I can't get beyond the sixth dimension until I actually begin to accept God's love into my heart and accept that I, am not, I don't know the truth. God is the one who knows the truth and I can be told the truth by God. And, and this is what they've been rejecting, if they think about it, they've been rejecting this all of their lives. And this is why they're now being skipped over by many spirits below them, because many spirits below them have been now starting to accept this truth, mm -hmm. that actually it's God's truth that matters, not the person who's telling me what they think is true. What matters is what really is true. And when I start accepting what really is true, God's truth, now I can progress beyond any teacher that I that that I've listened to, who have told me their truth, and there are many truths in the Buddhist movement, just like there are many truths in the in the you know Muslim movement. There are many truths in the Christian movement, and so forth. But the problem with them all 
is that they all are self-created. They are not God-defined, and therefore they will all cease to progress beyond that sixth dimension. It's just amazing. And they're also saying they've noticed the changes in the sixth sphere, and it has no. The changes have been occurring because of the individuals coming in yeah. and then leaving. Yeah. And it's been so remarkably dramatic. And then they've noticed all such clear changes. Yeah, well, traditionally what happened in the sixth dimension that was that lots and lots of people would enter it and hardly anybody would ever exit it. Mm. So that's what traditionally would happen in the sixth dimension. Now what's happening in the sixth dimension is there are people passing through the sixth dimension very rapidly. Now, most people who lived in the sixth dimension for a long time believe that that was never possible. And they feel constricted. Yeah, and they are being constricted, but it's by their own belief system, by their own lack of acceptance of emotion that's constricting them. They actually feel that they see the dimensional space closing on them. It's hard to explain. Well, because there's less people in it, it's the additional people in it that create its expansion. And because the imaginations of each people create the different existences there. So as more and more people leave the dimension, the possibilities in that dimension contract. Mm. Um, so as more people leave a dimension, the possibilities of the dimension contract. As more people enter the dimension, the possibilities of that dimension expand. And, and what's happening to them at the moment is the possibilities of their dimension are contracting. And they're getting quite scared that there won't be a place. That there won't be anything left. Mm. Yeah. And there is the potential that there won't be anything left in the sixth view. Um, but, but that's not something to be afraid of. It's something to be joyous about because that would actually mean that more people have entered the seventh dimension or the seventh sphere, uh, which is actually a, a more happier dimension to live in anyway than the sixth dimension. And so, uh, and and a, an invention closer to God, so therefore of greater happiness. So they don't need to worry about about that. Um, but it, I understand it being their concern because they've lived in many cases for thousands of years, if not tens of thousands it's of longer. years, in a dimension that was 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 expanding, and now that same dimension is contracting. And they're doing nothing different. And they're doing nothing different, and they're seeing all these external changes around them, but 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 not understanding why it's happening. Mm -hmm. They see the first dimension continually expanding. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's still growing. Yes, and it will continue to grow until the full amount of people, until the Earth enters the second dimension. The first dimension is going to continually expand. It's expanding rapidly. Yes. And, and it's going to stand even more rapidly once Earth changes occur, uh, certainly. And the other dimensions are, are contracting as well. Yes, because when, once a person finds the divine truth in particular, they'll, they will move quite rapidly through the lower dimensions, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Mm. And as a result of that, um, those dimensions are going to contract in their experience. There is going to be less people in those dimensions at any one point in time. And as a result of that, they will contract. The, the variation of experience will contract in those in those places as well. And then, um, but but the beauty of that is the dimensions above will expand. So the dimensions in the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and so forth, they will all start expanding as a result of the influx of people into those dimensions. They're willing to listen. Them. They're listening. They're attending. Mm -hmm. They're absorbing a lot getting a lot of assistance actually yeah the key, the key is for them to I know they have feelings of uh, there is a lot of resistance in a six dimensional spirit to receiving the divine truth about you know the fact that they can't progress beyond that dimension without changing the way in which they progress and they've become in many cases addicted to the way they've progressed mm. and what they need to do is to learn to actually know there is a different way to progress that is much more experiential but also much more rapid and, and that way um, has been discovered by, by somebody and they need to, all they need to do is have a person who's discovered it to show them the way and be humble enough to listen to that way. And be humble enough too then to feel their emotions of disappointment that they hadn't discovered the way sooner. And to feel the emotions of disappointment that, and, and sadness that you know, they've had many opportunities in the last 2,000 years to discover that way and yet they've rejected them. A lot of them are so proud of themselves. Mm. Mm. Well, many of them view themselves as God mm. in, in a literal sense. Mm. And, uh, and that, that is a false belief that certainly does need to be confronted. And 
there is a lot of emotions that need to be released. They can see the proof of it because they're not creating what the changes are occurring around them. So no, and they couldn't even conceive of those changes. Yeah, yeah. They and that's what's challenging. Them. They viewed themselves to be at the pinnacle of development of an ever growing dimension, and because the because the dimension was up until recently expanding laterally, expanding, expanding sideways, if you like, they then believed that they were in a place of growth. The reality actually is that all that happened was the dimension was expanding laterally because the numbers of people who were entering it and not leaving it. Yeah. Now that there's people ent entering it and then leaving it, and there's quite a lot of them now leaving it, now the dimension does not have the same capacity anymore. It's going to contract and it's going to continue to, to contract. And eventually it will become the size of people just passing. It will just be like a, a thoroughfare, a way to pass through a group of emotional experiences that need to be learned. And, and you'll move from the fifth to the sixth to the seventh in a natural flow of progression without stopping for a long period of time as they have done at one dimension. Yeah, I can see most of the influential teachers um, that we spoke to had left. And... Um, They've returned to explain things to them as well. Yes. Yeah, well, what happens with a lot of uh, people is they, they embrace the divine truth, they have to go back to the third dimension to learn the things that they did not learn in the first pass through that dimension. And they ridiculed them when they came back. Yeah, and then they get to the fifth dimension, they do the same, and then they enter the seventh dimension uh, for the first time. Once they enter the seventh dimension for the first time, they have the ability to come back to the sixth and explain the process that they've had to go through. The problem is that many of the people left in the sixth dimension won't believe the person who's now entered the seventh. Yeah, they ridicule them. And they ridicule them and they make fun of them and they feel that they've gone all Jesus on them and, you know, all those kind of things. And, uh, you know, um, and in the process of that ridicule, uh, they have actually rejected the truth. Yeah, yeah in all them. And for many of the religious leaders, if they think back to Paul's words, where Paul said that God, um, God puts to shame the wise things of the earth, like the ignoble things, I forget the exact words now, but it says that the things that are considered by other people on the earth and in the spirit world as not noble, not wise, not truthful, and everything else... In fact, God has used all of those things to confront the emotions of the people who believe those things. Well, they, they want to know how can you have so much faith that there is a God when you haven't, that it's an entity itself when it hasn't, that being hasn't been seen. How do they verify that there is actually a being? Well, well there's some simple ways of verifying the being. Um, but let me just state, there are some people who, who have a much closer position to God than they have. So therefore, the potential of seeing God becomes greater each new step you make towards God, for a start. But, but secondly, um, we can, God's created a system by which we can feel her, not just see her. And, and it's the feeling of her that you actually finish up needing to trust initially that you actually feel it. What they're trying to do is they're trying to trust their intellect and their sight mm -hmm. without trusting any feelings and emotions. If you actually long for God's love to enter you in the moment that you sincerely long for it, so not, not, it can't be an intellectual state where you go, if, you, if it is God, then give me some love. It has to be a feeling that you long for, or desire that love to enter your soul. The moment you long for it in a sincere manner is the moment you will receive it. And in that moment you will understand that actually God must be a person who responds to the longing of mankind. And if that's the case, God can't be just an energy. Because if it was just an energy, it's just like any person who had the intellectual knowledge would be just be able to plug into the energy and should receive it. But actually it's the longing and the sincere longing for a personal relationship with God that, that actually creates the inflow of the love into the soul. And once they allow themselves to actually have a longing for God like that, they will feel God's love into their soul. And when God's love enters their soul, it will validate the fact that God's love, God is an entity that has love for each individual based on each individual's longing. Mm -hmm. And just because I long, it doesn't mean that you will receive the love. Even if I long for you to receive the love, you will not receive the love. Mm -hmm. 
you need to long for the love before you will personally receive it. God wants the relationship directly with you, not via me to you. Um, yeah, they think it's inconceivable at this stage, but they know there's <coughs> evidence around to yeah. illustrate it. Well, every time they think it's inconceivable, what they are doing is they are limiting them from themselves from actually feeling the longing. Why not? Why not for a moment just go? All right, there's a possibility that I'm wrong, right? and I know that might be hard for them to accept. But there is a possibility that they are wrong, and if they, for a moment, just for a moment, have a feeling of longing for God and God's love, they connect to that feeling of dissatisfaction that's inside of them, that's inside of every one of them, and they connect to that feeling, and they have a feeling of longing, right, for that love to enter them. If they allow themselves to actually embrace that, just for a moment even, and feel the result of that, then at least they'll have some proof as to whether what I'm saying is true or not. They can intellectually postulate about, uh, you know, postulate about all of the all of the things I'm saying and theorize and, and 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 come up with all these philosophies about it. But until they personally want to actually feel it inside of themselves, until they personally want to actually feel that feeling of connection with God, all of their theorising and all of their intellectual philosophising is not actually going to do them any good at all. It means they have to take a position. They have to they be humble enough to actually take a stand. give up the idea that they are right and actually accept for the first time, that if they have a longing for God, that they might actually receive something from God. And if they actually submit humbly to that you know, as a, from an emotional position, they will for the first time experience something they've never experienced in their life before. And then as a result of that, have proof of what I'm saying straight away. They can gain proof straight away by doing this. If they continue to philosophize, they will never gain proof they are still going to be philosophizing in a hundred years' time or a thousand years' time. And they'll have let another thousand years go by where they could be much happier and much more in a much more joyful state. It's just a matter of being humble enough to go, okay, maybe I've been wrong all this time and maybe how God's designed the universe is not how I intellectually imagine it to be, but rather it's something completely different. And when I let myself humble myself to that place and then go, all right, God, I'm going to rely on you from now on to tell me how it is and I would love to receive this love from you so that, that is a substance that comes from God to the human soul I'd love to receive that love from you so that I can understand these things in that moment they'll begin to understand and they won't need to philosophize anymore because they'll actually be having the personal experience and they'll know for certain whether it's true or not and that can be done in an instant you don't have to wait for that but every time they sit back and philosophize for another, you know, for another 10 days, 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, they just lock themselves up from progressing. So well. graciously, thank you. But as they're talking to you, it's still constricting. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so. Because <laughs> more of them are connecting. Yeah. 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 For yourself, Anto, um, when you are relaying messages from spirits, try to keep yourself out of it. Out of it. I don't mean keep your emotions out of it, that's good, but what you're trying to do is Interpret. explain your emotional experience um, and what that does is it interferes with the flow of their communication through you and prevents you from actually accurately reflecting their flow. What we're discussing here are very... Like, so in this particular discussion... We're discussing things that actually affect the universal... Uh, it has a universal effect on the earth. We're talking to religious leaders who are leaders of entire movements here on earth where millions and millions of people and sometimes billions of people are following and yet you're interfering with that by, by trying to describe your own emotion because you have an emotion with me of wanting my approval or acceptance. And in that moment, you're actually now disallowing millions of spirits from actually coming to an understanding of the truth mm. by you wanting to get emotionally involved and and to say look what I'm doing isn't this good you know like um, was it hard to stay <coughs> connected to them though? it was it was strange it was different to 
last time we did the channel. It was almost like I just wanted to go and cry. Yeah. Instead of keep going on the channel. Yeah, yeah, I could feel that. It's sort of like the... And that's okay. Coming. You can cry. That'd be better than you explaining to me or to a potential audience what you're going through. Because mm-hmm. whenever you're trying to do that, you're trying to now engender the audience to come into your yeah. world with you. And unfortunately, there's actually thousands and thousands of spirits who are using or utilising this uh, event, if you like, as a way of learning truth. And But, but by, by putting your emotions above this whole interaction, you're now basically um, disallowing the full power of, mm. of the event. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. yeah.